Welcome aboard, Joe Holbrook here, the Cloud Tech Guy. This module here of the CBSA Mini Bootcamp, we're going to talk about Hyperledger, Fabric Composer, and Playground. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to discuss in this specific module. We're going to talk about Composer, we're going to talk about what a business network is to Composer as well, and why that's important. Also discuss Playground. We have some review questions, and then also, too, I'll point out some additional resources to study as well. Now, Hyperledger Composer was essentially a tool set, a collaboration tool, that was contributed by IBM and another company called Oxchains. Now, the goal of Composer is to really provide a development experience where you can accelerate your development uh, your development essentially around a blockchain application and if you think about it if you're a developer the last thing you want to do is to manage all you know the networking and and the hardware you know having to load a linux box and and all this to be able to develop something. So Composer was essentially a tool to help accelerate development. Essentially, you could be taking what could be, uh, you know, months or, or weeks, whatever, you know, whatever the extent is of your project, and literally cutting that time down significantly. And the goal of that is to help you develop smart contracts, blockchain applications, and then also deploy them across uh, that distributed ledger. Now, Composer is written in JavaScript. And it's also essentially one layer above Hyperledger Fabric. It's basically a sandbox, again, for developers. And remember, the goal of uh, Composer is to accelerate development. Now, Hyperledger Fabric Composer has some major components. Uh, runtime environments, it's essentially JavaScript, as we already know, CLI, REST server, has a loopback connector, uh, you know, again, it has a playground we're going to talk about here in a minute, and several other uh, components as well. But for the CBSA exam, it's not too important to know those. But what is important to know is to understand how Composer actually works, and why it's important uh, from a Hyperledger Fabric perspective. Now, Hyperledger Fabric essentially uses what, uh, you know, what is called a BNA. This is a package where you define uh, what your blockchain um, definitions are. Basically, um, it's going to put together your uh, your CTO file, your JavaScript, your .acl, and your query files as well. Now, basically, you have connection profiles, your business network cards. Basically, it's going to package that all up. Now, Composer basically uses what's called a connection profile. This is going to define the connection, essentially, for a Composer. And a connection profile is a JSON document, and it acts as part of a business network uh, as well. Now, basically, a business a network card, for example, uh, is going to be a combination of the profile, metadata, and, and some identity information. Basically, it's metadata around the business network. And the goal is to make connecting uh, to um, the business network easier. Let's define some terms. Uh, query, basically query is exactly what it sounds like. You're going to query the blockchain. This is sent via the API. Uh, event is pretty much what you would expect it. But in Composer, uh, basically it's defined in the business network definition. Events will notify that a trigger has basically occurred. And basically, it's going to use the Composer-Client uh, API. Now, some other terms would be around access control. Now, access control basically is exactly what it sounds like again. Uh, basically, the goal is to uh, set the controls for accessing the blockchain to determine who can participate, basically the assets, uh, who can basically participate in that business network, and also whatever conditions that may go along with it. 
now this is again a little bit more than what you know we could talk about in in a few minutes but basically it's pretty complex a lot of logic behind it um, typically it's going to have a lot of uh, what do I call debugging involved because again you're going to have to spend a lot of time to determine what uh, uh, what the uh, membership participants uh, conditions are what the controls are uh, again pretty pretty complex uh, another one that you want to know is historian this is actually an interesting term uh, in the sense that uh, you know if you didn't actually read the documentation or, or play around uh, with the composer and fabric uh, you probably wouldn't know what it is so it's basically a registry now Basically, it's a registry that's going to record successful transactions that happen on the network. And generally, too, it's going to record all the participants, the identities, uh, basically that participate in that transaction. And also, another note, um, it's going to store that in the uh, historian record assets uh, uh, transaction file. Now, when it comes to Composer, it's a modeling language. It's object-oriented. Uh, basically, uh, it's the language that's going to define uh, the domain uh, for a specific business network definition. It's basically what is called a CTO file. Now, uh, a CTO file uh, is, uh, is comprised of several factors. Now, basically, again, this is going to you know, deserve more than a few minutes, but basically uh, it, it's uh, going to comprise of what's called a namespace. This is where you're going to declare uh, the resources, uh, and then you're going to have resource definitions. Basically, it could be transactions, participants, assets, events. And then lastly, the third thing you're going to have is uh, the ability as well to import resources. And generally, this is going to come from other namespaces that have been uh, defined. Now, a namespace uh, basically is, uh, you know, what you would expect, you know, in general IT terms. Basically, um, it's going to be an area uh, where you're going to be working in. Basically, this is where the transactions are going to uh, occur. Also, to the uh, system namespace will also include uh, other uh, definitions like registries, identities, so on and so on. So a lot there. It's a pretty complex subject area. For this exam, you don't need to know too much more than what a CTO is. And then we have a business network card. Again, this is going to comprise of uh, a connection profile. Basically, you know, that's exactly what it sounds like. You're going to define how you're going to uh, connect. Uh, you have uh, metadata about the connection and resources, and then identity, and then also the name of the network as well. Now, let's talk about Playground. Now, Hyperledger Composer Playground makes the complex blockchain network easy for running blockchain testing. Now, again, if you're a developer developing a uh, blockchain uh, smart contract, any kind of... Uh, logic the goal is to uh, basically support your uh, your fabric blockchain and basically not have to worry about uh, what's going on in the background now there's two versions basically there's online and offline versions of playground the main difference is that online is going to run the business network uh, in your browser memory and then the local playground uh, is um, deployed uh, in the Hyperledger Fabric instance. And two, uh, remember too that uh, Hyperledger Composer uh, is, is really a development tool. And uh, at the time of, of writing this, it's still, I guess, considered uh, in um, alpha mode or beta mode. It's not really considered uh, full production ready. But it is a good tool. It's free. It's easy to use. The link to get there is uh, down here, composerplayground.mybluemix.net. This is a course hosted by uh, IBM and the Linux Foundation. Basically, again, uh, Composer is a graphical UI. Very simple to get started. You just follow the link. There's plenty of good documentation. 
and uh, when you do start it, uh, you have a couple options. Basically, the first option, uh, basically there's a tutorial to go through. Uh, you could also uh, set up your own business network or have it set up your own um, sort of default one. Uh, it's going to set up a default one uh, just so that you could go around and you know, play around and, and test. Uh, it's not going to be defined to, to what you want, but again, um, there's a, a simple method to get started as well. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about some exam readiness questions. Now, there's two versions of Hyperledger Composer, online and offline. Is that true or false, right? That's, that's true, pretty straightforward. Now, Hyperledger Fabric Composer .cto files cons consist of the following, except what? Remember that uh, the CTO files contain the namespace, resource definitions, and also you could also import resources as well from other namespaces as well. Therefore, the only one that doesn't make sense is the network adapter. Remember though, um, the, uh, the dot uh, .cto file along with transactions and access control and query get put together in what's called the business network archive file. So don't get confused over that as well. Okay, then a connection profile uses a blank document that acts as part of a business network card. Again, um, it's uh, not any of the three except it is a JSON document that's actually used. Now for the exam, go to the CBSA website here, sign up for the exam, it's $300. Now, they did release a, a study guide as well. Um, I think it's uh, 30 or $40 on our recall. It's around that price. Uh, feel free to take a look if that's of interest to you as well. Now, for those that would like to have um, practice questions, I do have uh, practice questions available uh, on Udemy. The link is there. Feel free to take a look. And then some other courses. I do have uh, a blockchain overview seminar as well online. And I do have a Hyperledger Fabric course on Pearson as well. I hope to see you there as well. Thanks for joining and please reach out if I could help you with anything. Good luck.